All right, guys, welcome to Ruby Amity Arena, episode 73, I believe. I hope you guys are ready for this, because I called it. I freaking called it again, just like the double the end from, from rewards from Arena. I called this one. Hold on to your, your butts, because this is going to need two hats. Oh, there we go. We're getting legendary cards, guys. Right here. Oh. Uh, I'll overlay it right now. We're getting three legendary cards. Let's go up to the patch notes, guys. Ooh. My big head's in the way. Alright. First, yes, there was a bug ye um, yesterday that prevented uh, Facebook players only to enter the game. That included me. My main account was a Facebook account. Um, first of the legendary cards, we have Ice Flower. This is going to be weird doing this. I have to switch between the, the tablet and my monitor in, in, the, in editing. But anyways, I called it, guys, Legendary Rarity. Right there. Legendary. I called that. I said this game needed legendary cards, but it's already so hard to level epic cards. And now, and it, it's so hard to pull an epic card. And now we're going to have legendary cards. You know how hard these cards are going to be to pull? That You know what this means. I'm calling it. I'm calling it right here. I'm calling it. Mark my words. We're gonna get new new chests that have increased chance for legendary cards. Just like Clash Royale had legendary cards, they had legendary chests. Or magical, super magical chests that have increased chance to have legendary cards in them. Cause at this rate, we're never gonna pull legendary cards. So what are we what are they gonna do? They're gonna make a new chest to make it easier to pull these legendary cards. But those chests are harder to get. They're gonna be harder to get than superior. Mark my words, guys. I'm calling it. All right, first we got Ice Flower. Weiss finds it hard to believe how much she enjoys being part of, of a com combination attack. Much like the bunk bed situation in their dorm rooms, the Ice Queen finds herself war warning, warming to her apparently not bestie, Ruby. Though sometimes the cringe is a bit too much. Wait, the floor is lava. Ruby, I swear you're five years old. Weiss. Alright, now let's hop over to the game, and you'll see Ice, ice Flower. Take a look, let's take a quick look. I only saw Ice Flower's uh, skill. So, it's basically Sniper Ruby with, with um, Weiss Ability. Sniper Ruby with Weiss Ability. Listen carefully. My BFF. No. Alright. So that's Ice Flower. That's basically Sniper Ruby with uh, Weiss. Is the freeze duration the same? 4 seconds. 23 second cooldown. That's actually relatively short. Let me go ch check my Weiss to compare. Alright. Um, same duration, but regular Weiss has a lower cooldown. Understandable. Understandable. Next. We have Bumblebee, or a six cost, um, aura, six cost aura, legendary unit. Of course, all three of the units are gonna be legendary. I forgot to talk about um, level five aura. I mean, five aura. God, I'm all over the place. I see ice wood, ice flower gonna be used a lot guys I'm calling it this card is gonna be used a lot just because freeze is such a good card and then you get your ranged unit for just one more no two more costs you get your sniper Ruby for two more costs but you don't you don't actually get two units so it's a one one more aura sniper Ruby and you get your freeze it says it fires Ice shot, so that means anyone not immediately 
frozen by the first ring. Anybody that gets shot when they're walking up to it, do they get frozen for the four, full four seconds too? We gotta see. Alright, back to uh, Bumblebee. A rather unlikely duo, the quiet, agile Blake and the rambunctious, powerful Yang come together in a neat black and yellow package, requiring more trust than the other combination attacks. Bumblebee grows stronger as the two become more like each other. A little courage for the scaredy cat and a bit of cool for the burning sun. Um, I don't know if I would call her the burning sun, because now, because remember, uh, Blake, you know, has been very recently, or last season, gotten close to actual sun, so now, calling them the burning sun, calling her the burning sun, it got me a little confused, you know. There's also the other sun. Because I ran away too much, Blake. I may not be faster, but I'm smarter. Yang. Oh. Wow, we're already getting references from the very last season. Upon skill, I mean, upon activating their skill, Blake drops down at the target location and pulls Yang towards her with Gamble Shroud while swinging her in an arc to damage and push enemies back. Okay, I haven't seen this one. I haven't heard her, her lines. Let's, let's hear her line first. Okay, it makes sense that, that Ruby's calling her out. I was like, wait, shouldn't the own unit call their own name out? But, or have their own line? But no, yeah, uh, Ruby's the one that called out the, the team formations. Alright, let's see the skill. Okay, so this skill does have a range. And it's a really long range, 12. That's the longest of a skill shot that has a limit. This is the longest skill so far. Really long cooldown, but it has knockback and the damage is rather weak. Really tanky though. Look at the model. That is post season 3 model. Is this going to be a Rocket Yang? No, it can't be a Rocket Yang. It's, it's more likely going to be a Biker Yang, but Oh, it says right there. Move to target location to, display, to displace and damage enemies, punching her enemies with great force, pushing them back. Okay, that sounds like it's gonna be Biker Yang, but with with um, post season three Yang, I'm, I'm down for that. Really down for that. Another thing to consider, I haven't said it yet, but like Clash Royale, per level, level per level, a level one. Um, legendary might be considered like a level 10 common so right off the bat level 1 rarities um, level 1 legendaries can be used maybe they might be considered 8 or 9 but point is that level 1 legendaries are good to go level 2 legendaries that if, you, if you manage to pull two copies they're really good to go because look that's 2,000 800 HP already for uh, Biker Yang. Let's go check out actual Biker Yang. Yeah, look at that. That is 2,100. 2,800. That's 700 points difference. And th that's and this Biker Yang is level four. Remember that these are the same cards. The only difference is the active. 1.8 um, attack speed. 1.8 attack speed. These are the exact same cards, except when you pull a legendary, they are good to go. They don't need more copies. This is Clash Royale written all over, guys. All right, let's move on to the last legendary card. Dr. Ublik and Zwei. Five aura legendary. Arena five. Oh, I forgot to say what arena. Okay, arena four. And Arena 3. So we get one at Arena 3, Arena 4, and Arena 5. On first meeting, Dr. Ublik severely underestimates Zwei. No, he doesn't. He believes Zwei is perfect for the mission and Mountain Glen because he is a dog. But yeah, yeah, that's more likely. Um, he, he, Didn't he say that was brilliant to bring Zwei along? Not because Zwei is invincible, killing machine capable of under understanding humans tearing Grimm apart and turning into a burning death ball. We're here to investigate an abandoned urban jungle teeming with death 
and hostility, and you brought a dog? Genius. Okay, yeah, there's the line. All right, guys, real quick, I forgot mm. to freaking um, record. Ublik. Okay. So, Ublik, a unit. Activating this skill throws Y out, but this Y is a little bit special. He knocks back units by two squares or two blocks, causes 310 damage, which is uh, actually a lot less than this rare counterpart. Um, it looks like he stuns them. It does not mention anything about uh, stun though. No stun in the uh, stats. No stun in the description. But they're clearly stunned in the animation. Look at that. That looks like it's almost a full second stun compared to Mercury's 0.5 second stun. Skill range is pretty far, but not as far as Sniper Ruby or a Roman. Basic attack max range. What does that mean? For five aura, I don't think I don't think he's a really good unit. Kind of low HP, but then he's ranged, so that makes sense. Uh, a little bit, sh just a little bit short on the on the range side, 5.5 compared to like uh, Sniper Ruby six. DPS, a little bit on the low side, but he's five aura. He should be better than this. We've talked about this. Why are the higher aura cards? Um, higher aura cards worse than their lower aura cards counterparts. His skill should not be determined of his stats having to be lower to make him a 5 aura cost. Like, if that was the case, okay, I'd rather his skill be weaker and put some points into his stats. Ublik is probably the worst stat-wise of the, of the uh, three new cards. Uh, use outside of skill as a unit himself, Ublik is the worst one. His skill, though, while it is good, leaves you with a bad unit for 5 aura. I'd rather just play the 4 aura regular Zwei, because you get a really good unit after Zwei um, lands. By that, I mean DPS. Regular Zwei. Where is he? 282 DPS! Are you kidding me? That is amazing for a forward card. He actually does more damage than Ren. But anyways, yeah. Ublik is the worst of the new legendary cards. That's pretty much it. Actually, I haven't checked. Oh yeah. Because this is still a Sniper Ruby, right? Yeah, look at that. It is still Sniper Ruby, but she has better stats due to um being considered like a level three or four. Wait. Wow. Ice flower. Wow, not that this Sniper Ruby might even be considered level five or six um of the epic version of Sniper Ruby. So this Sniper Ruby has already a lot of Lian and copies put into her already at level one. She's already a way better unit. At just one extra cost. Okay. Might be the best one. Might. But anyways. I forgot to include this Ublik uh, video, so I have to re record this after I recorded the other video. So now let's ha hop back into the original content. I haven't read anything. I'm, I'm seeing these patch notes for the first time, like you guys. I, I want to be excited like you guys. I want it. I want to show you guys my reactions and my thoughts. Okay, Let's take this hat off now. I want to show you guys the reactions and thoughts as I get them too. All right, balance changes, guys. This is a big one. Remember what they did with Ursa? Let's see what happens. Junior and friends, aren't you a little too old to be called Junior? Junior and his henchmen are bad. They are bad guys. Yes. But are actually bad in game. You're a bad guy. 
but that does not mean you are a bad guy. They cost a lot of aura, but disappointed most players. Though, that's kind of in, char in character, you have to admit. Mainly due to henchmen being too weak to protect Junior, while Junior's low attack speed could not capitalize on the two idiots protecting him. So are upping the HP of the henchmen, reducing their damage output, and increasing Junior's attack speed. Yes, but the, the henchmen are not there to make damage, to, to, to deal damage. They're there to just stall for a little bit while, while Junior in the back does damage. That's going to be huge. He's, he's attack speed is increasing by 0.6. That's huge. He is a rocket yang. He fires out and deals damage in a little AoE. So this is going to be big. Will he be used? He's not the meta, so... White Fang Lieutenant. We saw some players really making this unit shine, so we are adjusting him a little so his damage output matches his move speed. Ooh, okay. I like this. That was White Fang Lieutenant's biggest gripe. Outside from his huge aura cost, um, 7. Is it still 7? I don't think they ever hotfixed that, right? Okay, it's still 7, so... Yikes. He is... He has less HP than uh, than Yang, so that's a that's a huge deal. He costs two more than Yang, doesn't hit in an AOE, has less HP. Come on, guys, fix the real issue. But this is a start. 2.4 to 2.2. It's a little bit faster. At Legion Paladins. The Paladin was another high cost card that underperformed against the semblance casting superhumans it was surrounded by. So we are making it much scarier unit against the hapless, hapless turrets and tower to reward players that utilize it. Attack up 24%. Oh, that is huge. Ooh. Alright. So. 20... 218 at level 8. Okay, because... The, the standard... Hold on. Uh, do I have the gold? I do plan to use this card, so will I, should I put the gold in? Alright. 3 levels up. 160 DPS. It's still on the short side, but his HP is good. Alright. I, I think we might see a little bit more play on Elysian Paladins. I want to say that there's going to be more, more, more play. Spider Droids. Oh my god, that's a lot to look at. I haven't, I haven't read it yet. You know, we want, uh, you know, we want the spider droid to work. Yes, it was a prototype even in the show, and Adam sliced it in half. But we really like this unit, so we decided that we needed to make it re really less on its skill hitting buildings, or rely less on its skill hitting buildings and be a strong independent unit on its own. Certain cards will still knock, knock the heck out of it, but that's normal, right? Wow. HP up 34%. Attack down 33%. Cast time from 4 seconds to 2 seconds. This is a, that's a big deal for cast. Damage per tick up 35%. Skill range? Are you kidding me? 12. Skill damage to building. Okay, this, I see I see now. Skill damage to buildings 100% to 40%. So this means He's only doing 40% of his um, attack stat, or his skill stat. Let's check it out. Okay, so right here. His, skill, his area damage at level 1 is 65. Do I have... Oh, I don't have any copies of him, so I can't level him up. If I did level him up, 72. Alright, so he's only doing 40% of 65 to towers. So, he's not meant to be a tower killer anymore, but he is a unit killer now. This guy is going to be insane. Oh, wow. He still has some pretty insane DPS. I, I thought 33% down would, be a, would hurt, but what? He still has 485 attack, but 243 DPS, 2 second attack speed. What is his range? Range is 4.5, so it's not that far. But I I, I think I want to say we're going to see a little bit more spider droids. He, so he sounds on paper to be a lot more reliable. Oh my god, the meme. Petrogigas. Floyd was not doing enough damage upon death. 
So we're giving him even more gains against buildings. That explosion, 67% um, up. Skill damage to buildings, 40% to 100%. So I didn't even know he only did 40% of his skill. So not only was the worst card in the game, when you if you managed to get him to the enemy tower, he only did 40% of his passive or his his death passive to the towers. Are you kidding me? No wonder he was such a bad card. I, I thought he dealt the full damage, but I've never, first of all, I think I've only seen two in game and he's never made it to my tower. All right. One second. Okay. Yeah, that is huge, 67%. This guy is level three for me. As a meme, I level them up. Next level, 860. He is officially the giant skeleton from um, Clash Royale. If he makes it to your tower, your tower, boom, done. That is a lot of damage. Let's see. He still has a health issue. His, and his big issue is he doesn't go straight for towers. He go he he tries to fight units first. In this game that is flooded with multi summon units, uh, White Fang trio card. Uh, oh no, there's quad. Oh, but the the dropship does not um interact with him until it's dropped the units. But maybe Death Stalkers, AK 130s. Um, and then we got Emerald. This card has a, a hard issue that he can't get to the towers. So, I, I think this buff is great, but it's still not solving the underlying problem that this card can't touch towers in the first place. He doesn't really have the, the DPS to kill units. He costs 6, which is the exact same cost as the giant skeleton from Clash Royale mind you there's too much low cost um cycle units and and not only the low cost are they, not only are they low cost they're, they're multi-summon so it, it stalls this guy way too easy uh, this card is just not in the meta until they do something about the underlying meta high cost cards are not uh, they don't fit in this game right now they just not right now and I don't see any nerfs to, to the problem cards. Barber Tusk. Barber Tusk hits hard when he rolled, but it, it, it wasn't rolling hard enough, so we are giving it a damage buff. Yes. Well, yes and no. Yes, but actually no. The, his damage was fine when he rolled. I think it, it hit pretty damn hard. Let's go look at him now. Where is the? I know I have a copy or two. It's no, 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 close to the top, right? Yeah, here he is. Level one. Are you kidding me? Level one is 470 damage. Level one, level two, 516 damage. Again. Let 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 me look at the skill. It's it's single target, right? There's no AOE splash. Yeah. This is single target, guys. In a in a Han game. Listen to me. Barba, Barba Tusk damage was fine. His problem was there's too many units for a single target card to, to matter. His damage is huge now, but what does it matter if he hits one baby Deathstalker? It doesn't matter. If he hits one White Fang Thug, one White Fang Gunner, his damage does not matter. And again, aura cost five. This is huge for this card. I think four would be good. They love their low cost cards too much in this game. Their, their low cost quick cycle. Barber Tusk, I'm happy you got the buff, but that's not the buff you needed. Beringle, a buff, I bet. I'm calling it a buff. Our lovely Gorilla Grim wasn't making as big an impact as we hoped it would. So it's getting a nice boost to attack speed in hopes that we will 
fare better against all the little units and taking chunks out of it. Oh, look! They talked about the little units! Yes, the little units are the problem here, not the big units. But yes, Boringo did need this, uh, let's go look at him real quick. Because I know I don't have him yet. This DPS? 188. For a level 7 epic? Not level 7. For a 7 cost epic? I don't think his DPS is in the right place. His HP is definitely not in the right, right place because Ursa blows him out of the water. And it's a 5 cost. Anyways. Again, at least this guy has somewhat of an answer. His skill is on a long cooldown, though. If he gets surrounded by Baby Death Stalkers, the White Fang uh, trio cards, um, I think he could he, he could at least defend himself. He can clear that. But the underlying issue is if he doesn't have his skill, those multi-unit cards are gonna surround him at, at two to four cost, and then th he costs seven. He's not worth playing. Lyren. Ren hits really hard with his aura charge palm strike, but we thought he could do a tiny, teeny bit better, so we're giving him a boot to his attack card. Lyren is probably the least affected by the multi hit cards because his attack speed. Fight. Let, me, let me check. Yeah, he's got that sweet one second attack speed, one hit per second. Unlike other cards that have 1.2, 1.3, up to like 1.5. He can take care of units the fastest. His aura cost is low, but his HP is kind of lacking. Um, His DPS is actually really good, almost 200. This guy, a level 3 card, his DPS is better than that 7 aura card. I just talked about that. These, these low aura cards are so much better than the high high cost versions. Sure, he can um, tank for long. But that's that's not really his, his job. But Baringo's in a weird spot. Like, is he a tank? Is he a DPS? Because he's not really good at either. He's a jack of all trades, but master of none. So I think I think Ren is in a good spot right now. This five percent buff. It means a lot. He's a tower shredder. If he gets to your tower, he'll shred your towers. So, Ren, so far, best change right now. Our mo most understandable change. Not that, no, that's not how I want to put it. He's the most... Alright, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Nora Valkyrie. Miss Valkyrie is getting a small overall adjustment because she's pretty good the way she is. She can continue to go around breaking legs. Nice. Alright, this is what we were talking about. Nora needed some sort of buff and she's getting a little bit here and there. But everything is a buff. There's no nerfs going around. Alright. A level 2 Nora, 200 damage skill shot. Uh, still, still only hits on um, ground units, but that's all right. Her DPS is understandably low. She's an AOE unit. She's gonna hit more than one, so these usually have to be a little bit lower than single targets. HP, um, I like it. Ooh, level three, thirteen hundred HP. Okay, Nora is in a much better place right now. Yeah, I, I I think I can see a lot more Nora after this. This little tweak. Okay, Sun Wukong. We always wanted Sun's monkeying around to be disruptive and annoying, so we've increased his skill range. Now he can mess with units further away from him. Was this his pro biggest problem? I think this is this was a problem for Sun, but the the real problem is how squishy Sun was. Yeah, again, he's higher level, a uh, higher um, aura cost than the card we just looked at, Nora, 
But he's got less HP. Why do they do this? Your aura cost should reflect on how good the, the card should be. A 7 aura card should have the HP and DPS to back it up. A 5 aura card should have better DPS than, than the 4 aura card. Especially because he's single target. Yeah, his clones each get 60% of his DPS. But that's his clones. That's not that's not the oral overlying originals problem. That's what makes Sun a bad card. When the when the um, clones are gone or dealt with, or even if he's killed first, when the clones are gone, it's just Sun. Sun by himself is a pretty weak card. If like me, you play Roman who has a, a nine range skill. Grabs the original body and just smacks him twice. All those clones are gone. So, out of skill range, I don't think that was the problem again. I think the problem was Sun stats suck. Oops. Sun stats. Sun stats suck. That is his problem. It wasn't his range. His range is gonna help his him stay a little alive a little longer because his units are gonna be farther oh, fighting from farther away. But his DPS sucks. I'm sorry. He's got a 1.2 DPS. What's the speed? That's somewhere around the average, I guess. All right. Next card. Oh boy. I did not know her last name was Adon. Mei Zedong. Mei's HP always left something to be desired, especially when, like in the Vital Festival, she gets wrecked by big long range attacks. So we gave her a bit more and tuned her attack as well. For me, the best card to take out Mei was Zwei. With the 23 HP buff, is this gonna make her survive? Alright. Let's. Nope. Even if she was level 8, 203 HP. Most cards are gonna be able to one-shot her. Oh, no, two-shot. Most cards seem to be doing under uh, 200 damage. Actually, no, even Ren can one-shot her at, at a proper level. Look, level three. Even Ren can one-shot her at level three. That's why skill 620. Yeah, she's still not surviving that. Attack plus 8%. No. No, 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 no. Mei did not need an attack boost. Mei was already a problem, with, with especially with Emerald. I don't think Mei needed this boost. Okay, my Mei is a little on the weaker side. 80 DPS. She is there to be annoying at chip damage if she's left unchecked. And if you're playing the, the Emerald Cinder Mei deck with, like, speedy, um... Frontline units to cycle, cycle through and Neon Cat may can be a problem. Her damage was understandable to be just a little bit lower, let's say 8% lower last patch. It was understandable for May to be in that position because she's not, she has the longest range in the game. She fights from outside your tower range. She is there to slowly chip away at your towers. Even better than um, Cinder. Because no one can really get to her as long as your opponent is playing right and smart. Um, I think even... Hold on, let's check out. Enemy Cinder. Level... Level 2. No, oh, even level 1 Cinder can one-shot her. But then again, they're both... They're 3 aura for 3 aura cost. So it's a quick... If, if you're using... Uh, if you're using Cinder skill to kill Mei, uh, May, then you've, you know... Wasted damage to the towers or a big, big wave. You're not going to be using Cinder skill to just kill one main. All right. I think it may need its HP buff. Yes, she was extremely squishy unit. I don't think she needs the attack buff. She she did damage to your towers just fine. It sucked actually. She's really doing every time she shoots. 152 damage to your tower, and watching your tower because you haven't, you can't touch the May quite yet. 
be hit by 152 damage a shot. Or, you know, for most of us, we see level 10s, maze, level... No, I shouldn't say most of us, but th those of us that are closer to the max trophy count of 3,000 will we'll see level 10's maze. And it sucks just seeing your tower slowly chip away because May is just out there outside the range shooting at it. Alright. Overall, HP buff? Yes. Attack buff? No, I don't think she needed it. Nolan. Nolan Porfirio. I didn't know his last name was Porfirio either. Nolan was still proud of all your enemies, but just a tiny bit less now. I don't know how I feel about this. Nolan was one of the best aura cost counters to Scythe Ruby, uh, Beowulf Alpha, Weiss. Definitely a huge um, part of countering um, Ursa because he's that slow unit being slowed down even more. It meant a lot. I'm not happy about that change, but I can understand why they changed it, because you can, you can almost be stun locked. Oh man, my coffee's got, got in kind of room temperature. I've been talking too much instead of drinking. AK-130s, oh, I don't know how I feel about this. When they are alone, they are weak, that's true, but together these joys can tear anything aside from Biker Yang apart. So we've adjusted their attack speed to be a little slower. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't I'm not seeing an Ursa nerf. I'm not seeing an Ursa nerf and then they're nerfing one of the best counters for Ursa. Okay. My level 9 AKs. Uh, let's see level 10. Okay, my level 9 AKs. If all four hit, they're doing 600 damage every 1.5 seconds. I don't, know if, I don't know if these cards really need it. Wait, I see what they're doing. It's a five aura cost card. It has it has a high cost, so it needs a nerf. High cost cards don't belong in this game. It, it, there's only le level two, level one, two, three, and four, I mean level aura cost one through four. Those are the only ones that are that should be viable in this game, right? I I, I, I don't I don't like how this is going. Cards with high cost are kind of being like phased out. What? what? I, I, I don't know, man. This card was a great high cost card. It was, I would say it's the best high cost card. Well, consider, uh, when I say high cost, I mean cards that cost five or more. In that, in that sense of uh, field, this is one of the best five aura cost cards. And to nerf him? There, there's a lot of cards that, that can answer to these cards. We got the um, Lancers, Weiss, Zwei. Zwei is a huge counter to this card. Uh, Rocket Yang really hard counters these cards. Glinda's towers actually do a lot of damage. Alright, speaking of Glinda, I think she needs a nerf. But hear me out. Anyone who's watched my channel knows I'm a Glinda fan. I'm a big Glinda main. I've had her for a long time. I always use her. Her problem is that the school down the school down. The cooldown is actually kind of on the low side, 23 seconds. There's a high chance that she can uh, face down another one because she's a ranged unit. She is not gonna get hit as much, and she she stays back, and has a high chance of placing down that second tower. I would increase it to maybe 25 to 26 seconds. That way, if you if you manage to get to that 26 seconds, then you deserve to place that extra tower. But most of the time, she is like knocking on death's door by the time uh, the second tower want, wants to come up. So this will make. A huge difference if that's if she's gonna get that second tower down because 
getting two towers down for one Glinda. Again, a four four aura cost card is a really great. All right, what's next? Baby Death Stalkers. Oops. Oh, I can see what the next patch note is. Damn it. Baby Death Stalkers. Baby Death Stalkers show just how tenacious Grim can be. No matter how much we adjust them, they are still viable and powerful cards. So here we go again. The issue we are trying to address is the fact that, compared to their ease of use and lack of risk, one wrong move in these little Grim will level your tower in seconds. Still, we are almost sure that these critters will still be top picks in weeks to come. HP minus 12%, attack minus 12%, move speed from very fast to fast. Okay. Let's check them out. Um, let's see at level 9. 83. Wait a minute. 83. Too bad all that money can't buy Flint. 48. Before it took all three of Flint's um Wait, how many times does Flint hit? What? Let me count that. One, two, three. Okay, four. Before it took three out of four Flint four of Flint's chip damage to kill a baby death stalker. Now he can kill them in the first two of the of the ticks. Again, your problem was not your stats. For the baby death stalkers guys your problem was there's too many I, I, 15 lower that number keep the stats of, of the previous i would say summon 12 baby death stalkers this unit in this game is so reliant on 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 spamming units i think their stats were fine 12, 12 baby death stalkers i i would i would have called maybe 12 baby death stalkers that 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 might have out better and I'm I'm calling all the, I mean, I'm calling it out how I, I I've seen Clash Royale adjust their cards they know what they're doing already they've been in the game for three years their skeleton army is the exact equivalent of baby death stalkers they realized they were summoning too many baby death stalkers at once in Clash Royale so they lowered the number and after they lowered the number that it was such a perfect spot so they didn't mess with any of the stats the stats were okay it's the amount that got summoned that was the problem but they're not the exact same game the baby death stalkers seem to be a little bit more effective in this game than, than the skeletons are in the other game I don't know I think the best I still think the best change that this card can get is changing it to 12. Let, all right, let's move on. Uh, yeah, he was a... Sorry, I forgot to, to say the name. Mercury Black. Yeah, he was a jerk when he came to our development lab for modeling, so he gets a nerf just because. If you're reading this, Mr. Black, that's what you get, you little. Just kidding. We ran the numbers and he needed this change, but still fun. Attack, minus 1%. Skill damage minus one percent. You know, I've never had a problem with with Mercury. I didn't figure he needed a nerf. As a matter of fact, Let's where is he? Right here. His area damage is okay. He's a level two cost card, so his skill should not be doing that much damage. His DPS is really good at uh, as speed, not damage. But then again, he's a two cost card. His numbers look fine to me. So what did this one percent change? What did one percent change? This is this has to be a joke. Especially with that description, that, this has to be a joke. And the fact that when he hits something, he jumps away means he's probably gonna die after landing one hit. Especially against ranged units. Well, no, against ranged units, he's never gonna make it. He has so little HP. Yeah, I, I, okay, this one's a joke. I'm gonna consider this one a joke. Cinder. Okay. Cinder Fall. Miss Fall, ever since coming into our game, has worked her way into many, many deck compositions. Her ability to knock out swarms as well as snipe down single targets with her amazing archery has brought many of players to their knees. However, 
What made her overpowered in our eyes was something we haven't balanced before. Target switching. By reducing her ability to rapidly target the other, the another, the another, target another unit after vanquishing one, we hope to keep her mechanics similar. We're balancing her out. Target acquisition. She now takes two, uh, no, 0 0.2 seconds to switch to targets after one has died that she, that she was previously targeting. Oh my god, I saw that there, there's a Coco change coming. I, I, I don't know when to stop scrolling. To, until I've scrolled too far. All right, let's go to. Oh, well, there's no stat changes on Cinder, so I don't know what I'm gonna reveal here. All right, Cinderfall. Um. Yeah. Again, uh, her issue is her range, not her. Well, yeah, that, that actually is the issue too. She. Shoots way too fast at 0 0.4 attack speed. It, it practically looks like the game's bugging out. Oh man, where did I even begin on Cinder? C Cinder, Cinder's range is just a problem, but it's a real hassle when there's an emerald. So that's an, that's an emerald problem, not a Cinder problem. So I'm not gonna get mad at Cinder. Cinder, I'll I'll, I'll take this nerf. I, I won't ask for more because, again. A big problem with Cinder is Emerald, and Emerald should not make this card get nerfed. If, if, if Emerald needs to nerf, nerf her, but don't nerf uh, Cinder because of Emerald. Let, let's see how. Let's see if, what kind of differences this makes before I start complaining. All right, Coco Adele. Coco has been the opposite of Baby Deathstalkers, where we have been trying so hard to get this stylish, classy, gorgeous, powerful, and charismatic leader of Team Coffee into the meta but have still yet to get her just right. To this end, Miss Adela has phoned us, spat on the ground, and kindly told us to make her stronger, or prepare to die. So we are making her do a lot more damage, but are adjusting her targeting time, so she fulfills her role as single target killer a lot better. No, that last line right there is the whole problem, guys. Single target killers in this game are bad this is not a single target game this is a multi target game i've never seen like so much spamming of multi multi summon units her huge damage does not matter it's, it's especially worse now because if you play a, a, a baby death stalker against her after she kills one baby death stalker it takes her now 0.2 seconds to switch over to the new baby death Star stalker she's gonna target Single target units need help in this game. There's the multi target in this game is so bad. The, the, the multi summoning, it's a spam fest. <sighs> so, alright, let's go check her out. Okay, her max damage, she ramps up to 212. 53 at minimum. Uh, that, let's double her up. Uh, 58. Let's look at Baby Deathstalkers. Okay. She takes two ticks to kill one Baby Deathstalkers. And there's 15 Baby Deathstalkers. It takes 30 ticks with a 0.2 second break in between every tick, every two ticks, to, to, for her to wipe out Baby Deathstalkers. What? Just a what? Or let's say something that's a lot more common. The White Fang. Where's the White Fang? The. Oh, you know what? Let's just look at thugs and then we'll look at gunners. Oh, man. Mines are only level 2. It takes 3 ticks to kill. If it ramps up, probably 3 ticks to kill uh, White Fang thugs. Maybe. Maybe 2 ticks to kill White Fang. Uh, Gunners, and if they're playing the White Fang uh, squad for three cost, three cost hard counter this uh, four cost unit. Again, the lower cost cards are beating out the higher cost cards. Coco's problem was not her damage; she does amazing single target damage. But that's not the issue here. Why do they not understand that the issue is these multi-target cards? 
Lancer Swarms, Lancer, just regular Lancers, Baby Death Stalkers, Thugs, Gunners, AK 200s, uh, Baby Death Stalkers, um, Beowulf Packs, Bifang Squad, and then Emerald on top of that. This card, the new White Fang Watchtower, is that graphically glitched or just really, really shiny? All these cards, well, most of those cards I just named are really, really common in, in everyday decks. Coco is not suited to fight that. And you just made her worse. You made her take 0.2 seconds to switch targets after one has died. You've made her worse, not better. What are you guys doing? All melee units. Aggro range has been slightly reduced to prevent certain units from moving to unintended targets and slightly increased on some other units to move to intended targets. What does that mean? Does that mean my uh, Glinda's towers at the center, but slightly to the left, are no longer going to pull the left guys? Because they're, they're, they're aggro... Uh, is lowered and if I put it slightly to the right the right I'm not gonna be able to like pull Ursa's and Beowulf's anymore to the to Glinda's tower what, is, what does this mean do I have to put the tower a lot more to the left a lot more to the right so I can pull the aggro now I'm gonna have to see this one inside starting aura to kickstart matches faster we have decided to change the starting aura from five to seven that is huge I think this means a lot for, multi, for the low cost multi summon decks, especially with Emerald. Emerald decks are going to be able to swarm so much faster. I'm calling this one. Emerald, you're going to see a lot more Emeralds. <coughs> oh, wow, what is this all? A brand new motorbike. Okay, that's the one I did um, play it. You're going to see it at the end of um, me talking about the patch notes. A brand new motor ride. In the current prototype version of this mode, players will directly control Miss Ruby and fight off swarms of enemies in a hack and slash action combat. I did have some problems with, um, not buggy problems, but just problems with how it works. Currently only Miss Rose is available for play. Due to massive undertaking, this mode was in short amount of time we had to create it. Wait, due to massive undertaking? Well, you didn't have to release it right away. You could have... A lot of us didn't even know this was coming until not very, um, until pretty recently. So I, I think, in this case, if you're saying that they ran out of time, mm, you weren't really forced to release this this game mode. So you could have held on and worked on it. But um, yeah. So apparently, only Ruby works. Ruby's character level is linked to your account level. So level up in main game to power Miss Rose up too. To enter the stages, players need a ticket. And at exactly midnight every day, these tickets will refill up to two. By winning in either fun or fame matches, players may earn up to three more tickets per day. You have one ticket when the clock strikes zero, it will refill to two. If you have three tickets when the clock strikes zero, it will remain three. Okay, so basically, spend all your tickets before um, it strikes midnight if you want your full refill. Upon clearing a stage, a crate and Leanne will be rewarded, but there is also a chance to earn some cards on the side. The later stages will have a higher chance to drop rare crates and more Leanne. Okay, I gotta play that as fast as I can. Failing the stage will not cost a ticket, so players are free to try attempting a more difficult stage if you think you're skilled enough. I noticed that. I noticed that when I when I beat the the stage, it took my ticket. It took my ticket then. Only when I beat it. Card shop redesign. Okay, let's hop over to the card shop. I don't like it. I. I haven't read it yet. I am now forced to buy two copies of an epic card for four thousand. Why couldn't I just buy my one for two thousand? This is not a bundle deal. It's not cheaper. I am forced to just pay the bigger price. And now I can't. Aff Maybe I just want one copy. Uh, that is a lot to spend at one time. I don't like this. What? Side Ruby. I have to buy twenty now. What? Why are we have to buy them in a bundle? I... What are you guys doing? 
Okay, the card shop where Leanne used to purchase cards has gone under construction. The shopkeeper has made enough Leanne from the players and renovated his shop to be an even better shopping experience. That's a lie. That. That. This. Oh. Yeah. That's a lie, guys. That's a lie. I'm, I'm looking at it right here. This is not a better shopping experience. Now players can purchase stacks of cards at once to be to at predetermined prices instead of one card at a time with escalating the end price. But I don't want to. Why? You know how you could fix this problem and not 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 get people mad? Sell one epic card for two thousand. And then, every purchase after that stays at 2,000. Hey, it's fixed. Bought my one copy at 2,000. If I wanted another copy, I just pay another 2,000. So that way, if I wanted to, I can I can buy two. But if I just want one, I only pay the 2,000. I don't want two copies. Because look, I, I don't even have 8,000 gold, so I can't even buy this bundle twice. If I wanted three copies, I can't now. Three copies would have costed 6,000. I, I could have afforded three copies, but I can't afford four. I think this is this was a bad idea again. What is this update? Overall card prices have been reduced in the stacks versus how it was before with singles. You could have just kept the singles from increasing in price at at every purchase. That would have fixed it. That is so much better. Then people could choose when they want to stop at the at singles. Pot Tori. Epic card drop rates have been increased in all crates. All crates had an epic card drop rate no matter how small. And now we have increased it. Lies. Lies. I have never pulled never in almost three and a half months. Pulled an epic card outside of a greater or a superior crate. Yes, I know you can, and I know some of you have, but it's pretty unrealistic to do it. So, I, I feel like it's almost, like it didn't exist. However, we will be transparent. The low, lower the rarity of the crates, the lower these chances will be. Okay, that much, that much is obvious. I understand that. Follow Beacon Bundles release, period. Five days. The title's UI has been changed to look better. The title's UI? Huh? Not sure if I see a difference. Many, many grim in the code have been killed. Though we will... We know some still lurk. We hope, with your help, we can hunt them down and eradicate them. Bonus. Per usual, for those who made it all the way down here. Bonus. Oh, you bastards! Make sure you turn up your volume when you log into the game post update. Your ears are in for a treat. We promise. Pira did talk, didn't she? And I missed it. I'm gonna have to hear her when I go to when I go to edit my video. As always, thank you for, so much for playing Amity Arena and for the love and support of Ruby as a whole. You guys make it all make all of this worth it. The Amity Arena team. Yeah, this guy's got the right idea on the Baby Death Stalkers. I, at this point, they're nerfing all the wrong places until Baby Death Stalkers are gonna be useless because they're nerfing the wrong places. If they lo they keep lowering their stats, that which is not the problem. Eventually, it's gonna catch up to the Baby Death Stalkers and they're gonna be useless. Anyways, overall, I think they messed up this patch. What was all this? What? I am extremely upset this patch. They nerfed some things that shouldn't have been nerfed, and they buffed things that shouldn't have been buffed. They are turning this game into a swarm fest, and I don't like that. It's hard for me, as a guy who plays out of the meta, who, who plays almost nothing that's in the meta. I have not removed my Weiss since I unlocked her in the tutorial. 
Twice has been one of my favorite cards. <sighs> my Nolan got nerfed, my AK-130's got nerfed. I don't know. I am just so glad that they didn't touch Roman. If they had touched Roman, I may have rage quit this game. If they had touched the Yang, imagine if they had had nerfed Yang. Because she's 5 aura, she's like, oh, she's 5 aura? She can't be good, that's not how we run this game. I would have been so livid. Alright guys, um, this video is going to go up first, of course. Um, don't know if I'm going to do, you know, battles, or if I want to do the new game mode. I'm probably going to do the new game mode, actually I will do the new game mode. But for now, you guys are going to get this. Let me um, hop over to the uh, other video I recorded just a little while before this one. It's got me playing the new uh, game mode because you had to play it as soon as you started up the game. So, this will be a patch note with new game mode and then uh, the tutorial. And then I'm going to upload a new, another video later today of the new uh, game mode just playing that by itself. So... Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.